In this tutorial, we are going to work a bit more with colors. We already know how to color in the background of any app. Especially if you use custom tkinter, this should be fairly easy. However, what we don't know is how to color in the title bar. This one so far always had one color. It was either white or black. And unfortunately, there's no easy way of changing it. We actually have to use Python to target windows and then tell it to give it a custom color. And this is only going to work on Windows. So we also have to make sure that if we're running the code on macOS or Linux, we're not crashing the entire app. And that is giving us quite a few things to work with. So let's jump right in. Here we are in the code editor. And first of all, we have to import tkinter. Now, in this case, I'm going to work with custom tkinter, but this would also work with the normal tkinter. What I want to do is import custom tkinter as ctk. After that, I want to create an app. This we get with ctk and ctk. I guess while we are here, we can also give this a geometry of let's say 300 by 200. The number here doesn't really matter. And after we have that, I can run main loop to start the app. With that, I'm getting a small window. That isn't looking too terrible. And I do have some control over the colors. Most importantly, to set the background color, when I'm creating the app with CTK and CTK, I can set an FG color. This could, for example, be red. If I run this now, we have a red background color. You could also use hexadecimal values. For that, you need a hashtag. And then let's say FF00 and FF, and that would give you a pink color. Just as a reminder, FF stands for the red color, 00 is for the green color, and the final FF is for the blue color, which means in our case, we have a full amount of red and a full amount of blue and combine these two colors and there's no green whatsoever. And the result of that would be pink. However, now we have one important thing that we can't do, and that is to change the title bar color. How can we do that? To get started, we have to import a couple of things. I want from C types, import win dll, then by ref, then size of, and finally C underscore int. All of those modules are quite specific. The one we really care about is win dll, because this is giving us access to some system level functionality of windows. And that we can use to color in the title bar. And for that, we will need a couple of steps. First of all, we have to target the current window because right now what we are doing is we are talking to Windows directly. And what we want to do first of all is to get our current window. This you usually store in a variable called HWND, which is standing for the window handle. And that window handle you get with win dll, then user32 get parent. For get parent, make sure you spell this right. The G and the P should be uppercase. This is a method, so we have to call it. We have to add one argument, and that is app w info underscore id. And this is also a method. Basically, what is going to happen? This app w info id is giving us the current ID of the window we have open, the app we just created. And this ID we are using to get the current window handle. This is what Windows as an operating system sees. So this is what we are now storing in the variable. With that, we have access to the window, which means next up, we can actually change the title bar color. And this we do with win dll, then wm api, and then uppercase d wm set window attribute. This method wants four arguments. The first one is going to be the window handle. This we just got, so hwnd. Next up, we will need one argument that tells us what attribute we want to address, because this set window attribute can target quite a few things. To give this a bit more context, here is the Windows documentation for this method. We have dwm set window attribute, and in there, we can target quite a few different attributes. For example, in there, we could target the border color, the caption color, the text color, and well, quite a few more things. Most of those we are basically just going to ignore. I'm going to add a link to this website, but it's not going to be too important. Back in the code, all we really have to do is add a 35 in there. 
This is the attribute for the title bar color. Next up, we will need the actual color. And you might be tempted to simply add something like red. Unfortunately, that would not work. Instead, we need a very specific kind of color. And this is called hexadecimal color. Let me store it in a separate variable, actually. I will call this one the title bar color. And this is going to be a weird format. We start with a zero, then an X, then zero, zero. And then we can add a color that looks something like this, except it's inverted, which means we are adding two digits for the blue color, then two digits for the green color, and then two digits for the red color. For example, if we want to have pure red, this would be zero, zero, then zero, zero again, and for the red color, FF. Once again, we are using hexadecimal values, which means zero is the absence of the color and F is the full amount of the color. You might be wondering now, what kind of value is this even? Because we have a bunch of numbers, but then a couple of strings. So is this a string or a number? The answer is this is an integer. If I simply print the type of the title bar color and comment out the DWM set window attribute and run all of this, we're getting a class integer. What we're creating with this one is a special kind of integer. Although we don't have to worry too much about it. This color we now want to use, but we have to convert it. And for that, we have byref and c underscore int. To use them, we first of all have to use byref. And this one wants the argument with c underscore int. And this one wants the actual color. Title bar color. And let me put all of this over multiple lines. That way it's a bit easier to read. There's one more argument we need to make all of this work. And this one is fairly technical and it's always going to be the same. What you need is size of, and this one wants the argument C underscore int. At this stage, don't worry too much about it. Just always add it and then you're good to go. But now, if I run the app, we get a red title bar color. That is because in the title bar color string, we have the full amount of red, we have no green, and we have no blue. If we change this to an FF for blue and 00 for red, run all of this again, we get a blue title bar color. What you can also do, let me copy all of this and paste it right below. If you target attribute number 36, then you target the color of the title bar text, which means if I run this now, we can't see the text anymore. The bit up here is gone. Oh, well, it's not really gone. It's just the same color as the background. However, if I give this another kind of color, let's say the title text color, this would have to be the same format that we have used up here. Let me copy it actually. And let's say for the color, I want to have no amount of blue. I want to have the full amount of green and just a bit of red. So let's go with nine and nine. And this color I want to use for the text color. And if I run this again, we get some greenish looking color. That is because we have the full amount of green and some red. With that, you can change the title bar color and you can change the text of the title bar color. It's not terribly elegant, but it certainly works. However, there's one major issue that we have to address. All of this code is only going to work on Windows and let me get rid of the white space. If you try to run this code on macOS, you would get a crash because Python couldn't import WinDLL. This one is exclusive to Windows. As a consequence, we want to add a tiny bit more code that if we are running all of this on another operating system that would cause an error, we are simply skipping this part of the code, which means we want to add a try and an accept statement. And this I have covered earlier in the Python introduction we basically need two important keywords. They are called try and accept. I hope you remember those two. In fact, this is going to be your exercise. I want you guys to make sure that this code would run on any operating system, which in effect means that if you're running this on anything other than Windows, we are simply skipping this line and all of these lines. Pause the video now and try to figure this one out. You might have to go back to the Python introduction, but see how far you get. First of all, we have to wrap all of this import into a try statement, which means I want to try to import this like so. 
And when I'm using try, I also have to use except. In this case, I simply want to add pass to all of this. I am telling Python to try to import all of this stuff. If we are on Windows, this is going to work, so Python is going to be happy and run this line. However, if we are on macOS, this is not going to work. And as a consequence, we're going to end up with the accept statement. And in there, we simply have a pass, so this is not going to do anything. That is going to be the first part. We do, however, need a second part. If we left the code like this, we would skip this line, so the code would work up to that point. This bit here would also work. However, now Python would try to run this code on any operating system. And since we don't have WinDLL, we would get an error. As a consequence, all of this also needs to be wrapped in a try except statement. Let me indent it, and I will need try. At the end of all of this, since we're using try once again, I will need except. And once again, I want to accept pass. We are telling Python to try this entire block of code and check if it is working or not. If it is working, everything's good and simply continue. However, if it is not working, simply don't do anything, which we're doing with accept pass. I can run the entire thing again. We are getting our current app. However, now, if you ran all of this on macOS, although it would have the standard colors. So at the very least, we have something. And with that, we have covered another really important part about styling.